A few months ago in February 2022, I shared a video about my experiences with the Japanese demo of Token Rambu Warriors. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of the Warriors series and I was able to enjoy the demo despite only being able to read a few Japanese words. It was honestly just so refreshing to play a Warriors game that actually felt like a Warriors game. Token Rambu Warriors is what I would call a cut down or perhaps more focused version of a full Warriors title. I actually have zero history with the Token Rambu IP, but if you want my quick upfront opinion, I genuinely think it's pretty good and I think it's far closer to the Warriors experience that I personally want. Now obviously that was quite a positive intro, but let's slow things down a little bit and get into the finer details. Token Rambu Warriors is a 1 vs 1000 hack and slash musou game featuring characters from the popular Japanese free-to-play mobile and browser game Token Rambu. That original free-to-play title was only released in Japan and it was actually a digital card game. The game that we're talking about today, however, is another hack and slash Warriors spin-off game in the same vein as Dynasty Warriors, Samurai Warriors, Hyrule Warriors, and many more. If you've ever played a Warriors game before, you'll feel right at home here. It's also worth noting that this game plays a lot more like the old Older Warriors games. So, if like me, you weren't happy with the gameplay direction of Dynasty Warriors 9 and Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires, you can breathe a sigh of relief. As I said at the start of the video, I don't know much about the world of Token Ranbu, but as far as I understand it, the characters in the game are called Token Danshi, which are humanoid representations of historical Japanese swords. There are 15 Token Danshi in the game, and their goal is to stop and defeat the forces of evil that are attempting to go back in time and change the course of history. In terms of physically playing the game, we can split it into two main sections, which are the hub area and the battle screen. The hub area is called the Honmaru, and this is where you perform all of your character management. The Honmaru has multiple options and services for you to make use of. First of all, you've got the actual Honmaru option at the top. This is where you can dispatch the various characters or token danshi to specific places within the home base. In between battles, these characters will level up passively, allowing you to power up multiple characters at once instead of just the ones that you're using in battle. The Honmaru itself will level up between battles as well and provide new options for the player as it progresses. From time to time, special conversations will activate between certain characters if they're placed together and if their bond level is high enough. If two of the token danshi are placed together in the Honmaru, they will also earn bond XP which unlocks bonuses during combat. You can also activate random mini-games in between missions as denoted by the little dice symbol. These mini-games vary but they generally give rewards such as money, XP and materials. The sortie section is just the option that takes you to the next battle and replay allows you to replay missions that you've already cleared. The upgrade section is where you can spend the materials that you've acquired through gameplay on active and passive skills for the different token danshi. You can unlock loads of different upgrades like attack bonuses, defense bonuses, and special attacks that you can equip. Each character has six skill sheets for you to complete and you can't move on to the next one until you've bought everything from the previous sheet. This section also allows you to map out the buttons for your special attacks and to equip items to your characters. If you're not familiar with Token Ranbu, you may be surprised to learn that you can't actually find, craft, or equip different weapons to the characters in the game. This is because all of the characters wield a very specific weapon, namely the famous sword that they're the living embodiment of, so it does make sense. The shop section doesn't really need much explanation, but this is where you can purchase new items and materials, but as far as I can tell, you can't actually sell your items here. Lastly, the memoir section is just a collection of the unlocked miscellaneous stuff like voice lines and cutscenes, things of that nature. There's also a photo mode you can access by pressing the left trigger for those who might be interested. Now let's talk about the battles and the combat system. There are two control layouts for the game which are labeled as easy or regular. Regular mode plays as most other Warriors games would, but easy mode allows you to pull off special moves and more with a single button press. It's essentially a mode for people who just want to play it casually or perhaps for younger players. The stages in Token Rambu Warriors are much, much smaller in scope than most other Warriors titles. These battles are essentially bite-sized and I would imagine that this was done for two reasons. The first being that this is a Nintendo Switch game and smaller battles would make more sense on a system that most people use in handheld mode. The second is the theme of the game in general. I don't know for sure, but I don't think Token Rambu is known for giant full-scale battles. I could be wrong on that though. From my experience with the game, I would say that most battles range from about 1 or 2 minutes to around 5 or 6 minutes, with only a few ever going beyond that. After selecting your token danshi, you're placed at the start of a battle, and then from there you simply follow the basic instructions. Sometimes you need to look around for something specific, sometimes you just need to kill everything, and very rarely you'll have to do some rudimentary stealth sections. 
Combat-wise, it's much closer to something like Samurai Warriors 5 than Dynasty Warriors 9. It follows the tried and tested Warriors formula of tapping a button to do a standard combo and then finishing that combo with a charge attack. Just like the older games in the series, you start off with low combo numbers, but over time, you'll unlock bigger combo chains and more charge attacks. As you might imagine, you can also execute a flashy Musou attack when your gauge is full. So the basic combat is there, but what's new? Well, in most battles you'll have a partner character with you who can jump in and perform a bond attack. This attack is mapped to the right trigger and it of course has a cooldown. Another addition is that you can tap the dodge button after landing a charge attack in order to dash towards the enemy and set you up quickly to start a new combo. The charge attacks can also be done from a neutral position by holding down the right shoulder button and then pressing the appropriate face button. This allows you to pull out whichever charge attack you want at any time instead of only being able to end a combo with one. You can also execute a powerful double Muso with your partner character once you've unlocked the ability to do so. Lastly, as you're fighting, you'll probably notice the small fox-like character running around your feet. This is Konosuke, and he can do things like lead you through a stage and discover hidden items, areas, or secret paths during a battle. So, after playing games like Dynasty Warriors 9 and Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires, which were kind of train wrecks in my personal opinion, how do I feel about Token Rambu Warriors? Much better, actually. It's not quite what I wanted or expected, but I think it's a damn sight better than whatever DW9 was supposed to be. I'll put it this way, if you could only buy one Warriors game and you were interested in both Token Rambu Warriors and Samurai Warriors 5, I think I'd probably still go with Samurai Warriors 5. And that's just because it's closer to the Warriors experience that I want, so it's much more of a personal choice. I mean, if you're a Token Rambu fan already and you don't have a history or interest in the other Warriors games, but you want to know if you should buy this or not, I'd say yeah, I think it's a fun game. Story-wise, being completely honest, I did find it kind of hard to get into. I did some research on the original Token Rambu before playing it, and it still didn't really click for me. I don't know why, but I just found it to be really difficult to enjoy the narrative side of it. And it wasn't like I just looked at it all and said, oh, I don't like this or anything like that. It was more of a case of, it's an interesting concept, but it didn't really hook me, if that makes sense. I think the game assumes that you already know who the Token Danshi are, and it doesn't really explain much of anything either so I was a little bit lost. After playing through the game and watching all of the cutscenes and reading all of the dialogue, I'm guessing that the game was made specifically for the Japanese audience and we just got lucky in regards to getting an English version. And at this point I should say that the game does only feature Japanese voices, which is fine by the way, they are rather good but I just thought I'd point it out. It's kind of funny actually, as I wrote this script it dawned on me just how obvious it all is. I just hadn't really thought about it until now. The game is absolutely meant for existing Japanese fans and we just happened to get a localization by, you know, luck or whatever the situation was. The game doesn't really give you that much to go on in regards to who these people are and what they can do. I'd say it's a minor issue at worst when it comes to Warriors games though. I mean, I've heard the Dynasty Warriors story so many times over at this point and I don't think it's unfair to say that most people play Warriors games for the 1 vs 1000 combat. You know, that sort of just turn your brain off and play kind of combat. I think visually it looks rather good for a game developed for the Nintendo Switch. I know it's on PC as well, but that is just a simple port of the Nintendo Switch version. The character models look quite clean, moderately detailed, and for me, they're the standout feature in terms of graphics. They look really good when set against the sleek blue and pink of the menus, plus I think they're really well animated with the Musou attacks looking particularly good. The combat feels snappy and it has that satisfying warrior's battle system that while niche and repetitive, has a loyal fanbase. The standard attack to charge attack combo system is alive and well, thank god, and really the only thing that lets the battles down for me is the environments and the short runtime. The environmental detail has never been that good in the Warriors series, I think that's fair to say, right? I suppose their artists and their level designers do the best they can, but when you consider the age of their in-house game engine and the limited power of the Switch, I think it's generally acceptable to look the way it does. Some areas look better than others, of course, but in general, it gets the job done. 
I think the 3D models for the enemy characters and monsters look fine in battle, although again, I don't really know exactly what the monsters are or where they come from, and there isn't really as many of them on screen at one time as I would like. My one main problem with the game is the length and the size of the battles. Again, I think I understand why it's been implemented this way, but during my time with the game, it's the only thing that actually bothered me. And just to be clear before I explain that, it isn't a huge problem or a reason not to buy the game, it's nothing that serious. It just kind of lowered my personal enjoyment of it a little bit, that's all. So yeah, you spend a few minutes sorting through your characters, buying upgrades, playing the mini games, equipping skills and items, and then you go into battle and you're done in about two to five minutes. Keep in mind that I'm not joking with the times I'm giving you here, I'm not being hyperbolic. Most missions are going to average somewhere between 3 and 6 minutes, something like that. Pretty much all of the maps are very small, and even with clearing out everything in them, I generally only got around 300, maybe 400 kills per stage. So you have short missions, small maps, and low enemy counts, but as I said earlier, Token Ranbu isn't really about huge battles as far as I'm aware. They're almost like a covert group who sort of go in, get the job done behind the scenes, and then get out. It's also designed for the Switch, which does tend to favour smaller bursts of gameplay. Apparently Nintendo's own numbers suggest that around 30% of players only play in handheld mode, around 50% use both modes frequently, and around 20% use TV mode only. I fall into the 20% and I played this on my TV exclusively, but you do often see a lot of Switch games being designed from the start with the console's portability in mind. So perhaps that, when combined with the Token Mambu theme, led to the game being a bit smaller in scope. Either way, I genuinely don't believe that any of that ruins the game in any way, shape or form, and it's just something that you'll have to get used to. In my opinion, Token Mambu Warriors is a mostly enjoyable Musou game that occasionally reminds me of why I enjoyed the older game so much. My only real gripe is that I wish there was simply more of it. Things like character intros, more playable characters, bigger and longer battles, and more enemies on the field to name a few. I think the game looks quite nice, I think it plays really well, and it's well made from a technical point of view. Ultimately, if you're a Token Ranbu fan from the West, this has got to be an instant buy for you, I'd imagine. If you enjoy the source material but don't really care about Warriors games one way or the other, then I still think you'll be okay to pick this up. On the other hand, if you're a huge Warriors fan like me but you have zero knowledge of Token Ranbu, I think you'll still find it to be a decent addition to the Musou library. Just be aware that the overall size and scope of the game and the battles are quite a bit smaller and a lot more compact than you're probably used to. If you enjoy the video, I really hope you'll consider subscribing, and if you like what I do and want to help support the channel, please check out the first link in the video description down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.